Okay, in this video, we're going to be making a one gallon batch of strawberry rhubarb wine. Haven't done it before, so it should turn out to be something interesting, I hope. Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation in a shoestring budget. Also, would like to welcome a special new member, Bill Clark, for joining the membership club. Appreciate that very much. Now then, on with the show. To make our strawberry rhubarb wine, we're going to be using the following ingredients. I've got about three pounds of rhubarb. I have two and a half pounds of fresh strawberries. We'll be using the juice of half a lemon. One black tea bag. We'll need about a cup of chopped raisins. We'll be using a Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast. We need about a gallon of purified water. We'll need a fermenter, preferably something with a wide mouth opening. We'll need something to do secondary fermentation in. And that will require an airlock with bung. It would be helpful if we had a hydrometer and testing tube so we can determine how much alcohol we're producing or, or our AVB. And before I completely forget, we're gonna need three pounds of sugar and your sanitizer of choice, whether it be One Step or Star San. We want to make sure all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized before we start this wine making operation. And this is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now I've taken the opportunity to go ahead and wash this rhubarb. And what I want to do now is that I want to go ahead and chop these up into small bite-sized chunks and put them into a freezer storage bag where then I'm going to put them in the freezer. I had to put away the smaller chef knife and break out the big one for this job. Sharper, bigger, and definitely easier to work with. All right, and into the bag it goes. Go ahead and seal it up. And into the freezer it goes. Freezing it and then thawing it will break up the cell wall. Helps to extract the juice a bit easier. I've thawed out our rhubarb and I've sanitized a nice big pan. And I've got two pounds or four cups or one liter of sugar that we're going to be using to macerate our rhubarb. So we get that process started. I guess we can do this in layers. Let's pour out some of our rhubarb. Sprinkle liberally with sugar. Pour in some more. A little more sugar. And now you can just dump in the rest, along with the rest of the sugar. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and cover this up. Plastic wrap or aluminum foil, whatever you got. We just go ahead and let the maceration process do its thing. Uh, I think I'm going to take this and put this in refrigerator because it might take a day or two. 
before we move on to the next step. Let's give these strawberries a real good rinse. And let those drain off a bit. While the rhubarb is finishing up in the maceration process, let's go ahead and get our strawberries ready. And basically, we, we, just, we just want to uh, remove the foliage and just do a rough chop in the quarters, something like that. That's all you need to do. Let's go ahead and get these in the straining bags. Let's go ahead and rough chop our cup of raisins and we can get, go ahead and get those into the straining bag as well. <laughs> it's always a sticky affair with raisins. Let's grab a straining bag and let's go ahead and get those in there. Now we can, nope, get them all. I paid for them. I want to make good use of them. All right. Go ahead and tie off our bags. I've let our rhubarb macerate for the past two days. And let's see what we got after two days of letting this just sit around in syrup. All right. I mean, there's, there's juice in there. But what I want to do now is that I want to put the rhubarb into a straining bag and then squeeze out as much juice as possible out of those rhubarbs before putting them in the big pot. So let's get that process started. Okay, it's a small load, but we'll start with that. And yes, by the way, my hands were thoroughly cleaned before doing this, which they're going to need to be, because you're going to have to squeeze this fairly tightly. Get as much of that rhubarb goodness out of this bag as possible. All right. Yeah, let's get another batch going. All right, I think that's pretty much all that I'm going to get out of these, these rhubarbs. Okay, so that just leaves us with our very sweetened rhubarb juice. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this in a four cup measuring cup because I want to see basically how much liquid I've got to subtract from our one gallon 
of water. And that's coming in at four cups there. So we'll figure five cups, just to be on the safe side. I've poured off five cups of our water to make room for the juice. And what I want to do now is just pour in, I don't know, roughly half a cup or so. It's no need to be precise for a tannin substitute mixture. And we'll pour the rest of our water in the pot. What I want to do now is turn the stove on to a simmer. We want to simmer our black tea, which is again acting as our tannin substitute. And we want to turn the heat on high to bring our water to a boil. With our water now at a boil, let's go ahead and turn off the stove. Let's drop in our strawberries. And again, the reason why we're putting our strawberries in boiling water is to kill off any stray yeast or wild yeast that might have been on the berries and also to some degree kill off any bacteria that might also be there as well. Since we're not using Camden tablets, this is the alternative. And while we're at it, let's take our rhubarb sweetened juice. Let's go ahead and add that to the mix. Let's go ahead and put our cover back on. Let's take a look at our tannin substitute. And that appears to be about ready. So that being the case, let's go ahead and add our tannin substitute to the mix. And then put our cover on and let that come down to room temperature. With our mixture now cooled down to room temperature, we want to go ahead and begin the process of moving it from the pot to the fermenter. My hands have been freshly cleaned. So let's begin the process of, if I can do this without spilling it everywhere, taking our straining bags. With our freshly sanitized spoon, let's go ahead and stir that up a bit. And let's start the process of taking a hydrometer reading. Our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.068. We're going to give our mixture one more 
good vigorous stir. Reason for that is that at this point, we want to try and get in a little bit more oxygen into our mixture to help out our yeast. Perfectly fine. Doing it now, but it is not something you want to do later on. That having been done, we can now add in our quarter of a teaspoon of yeast and see if you can get it to just sprinkle it around without dumping it into one spot. Now, if you want to bloom your yeast, that's perfectly fine, but I've had nothing but success doing it just like that. It's now time to label our creation. We are making strawberry rhubarb wine. We started it on this date and our original gravity reading was 1.068. Now, once a day for the next three days, you want to come in and give that must a good vigorous stir uh, to help with the oxygen for the yeast and also just to circulate everything around that fruit we've got put in there. And then after that, just leave it alone. After a total of five or six days, you can then go ahead and rack this into your secondary carboy and start the process of bulk aging at that point in time. After about ooh, anywhere from six months to a year, depending on how clear you want your wine, how many rackings you do, uh, you can go ahead and uh, start enjoying your strawberry rhubarb wine. All operations that follow this step here, primary, you can find in the winemaking operations playlist, which is located on the channel page under playlist. If you enjoy what you see here, please click on the subscribe button, better yet, become a member, better yet, PayPal donations to help support this channel out. And I'll see you in the next video.